Today we're going to check out the step-on bindings. I'll provide an overview of the step-on binding product, how to install and use them, so you'll have the best ride on the mountain. Let's see what the step-ons look like and how to install them. First, you have the foam on the footbed to absorb shock on landings and allow some flex with the board so you can really feel the board underneath your feet. If you pull the two tabs under that, there's the reflex mounting disc for channel and 4x4 mounting systems, which allows you installation on any board in the market. Place the disc in the binding and adjust it according to the angle you like to ride in. If your board has a channel system, make sure you slide in those channel inserts. Then, add the screws to the matching holes in the binding disc. Using a number 3 Phillips screwdriver, screw it just enough to hold the bindings in place, but still somewhat loose. Slide the bindings on the channel, or find the position in the 4x4 system to set up your stance, and screw it all the way in. Now, this is really important. The step-ons have gas pedals, which allow you to adjust the binding according to your boot size. This will reduce toe drag and maximize the response. But above all, it will ensure that you're in the right spot for clicking in. Just open the gas pedals from the back tabs and make sure it matches your boot size as indicated in the back. For the final setup, you can also adjust the forward lean using the two screws position inside the high backs. As you screw, you'll see F1 to F4 scale in the back. The higher number means more forward lean and more response, and the lower number means less forward lean and more freedom and mobility. You can even adjust the forward lean unevenly between the screws to allow this extra twist in the binding and match your riding style. You will need step-on boots because they have the heel and the two toe cleats to engage in the bindings. So yes, it does somewhat limit your boot selection. In my opinion, Burton makes some of the best boots in the market, but it is personal. And you can buy your boots from other companies as they're starting to give out licenses for that to other brands. So let's see how to get in and out of the step-on bindings. The step-on bindings have two point connection, the main click in the heel and the two hooks in the front near the toes. Click the heel first and push it down all the way until you hear two clicks. Push down and click in the two toes. There are two positions in the heel for those snow pack days. So if you click in when you have snow in your bindings, there's a chance it will click only once. It will work just fine and both positions are safe. But a double click will give you optimal performance, so it's best to brush off that snow. Getting out is also easy. Just pull up that lever and release your heel first, then twist your foot forward and up. Another couple of things. Make sure you slip the bottom of your pants to that back cuff clip so you'll be able to engage properly. Just check it from time to time to prevent your pants from getting stuck when you click in. Last thing, you will get a leash with your bindings. So if you're worried about your boots separating, use the leash. This is my second season with the step-ons and honestly, I don't see it ever releasing on its own. However, if the lifts are packed or you're about to hit as many runs as possible, you only need to put on that leash once and undo it when you're done, which only takes a couple of seconds. A small tip I have so you don't lose that leash. I just keep mine handy at all times connected to the high back. That way I can always have it in case I feel it's necessary. Next, check out my review video on the step-ons with answers to some common questions you may have heard out there. I hope I covered everything, but feel free to ask questions in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. More videos on the step-ons and other snowboarding gear coming soon.